All right, guys. Today is review questions, so we'll start with question one. Okay. So, 46-year-old man comes to the clinic because of a dry cough, fever, and dyspnea. His white blood cell count is elevated, and x-ray of his chest diffuse patchy interstitial inflammation. He is diagnosed with walking pneumonia. Pneumonia and is prescribed the most common first line antibiotic, which of the following is a plausible method by which bacteria could attain existence in the prescribed medication. Oof. Um, a alteration of the pentapeptide side chain of um, uh, and acetylmuramic acid, increased utilization of host cell folate. Um, the methylation of the 23S ribosomal RNA, D, mutation of the gene for DNA gyres, and E, production of an enzyme that, oh, enzyme that cleaves something. I can't even read it because these squares on the beta lactam structures. There you go. It's either A or C. I've asked this question before. No, not like this question, but in general, just like as a point, because what's the drug that you're going to give for this patient? Macrolide. Correct. So what does it bind to? It's not the one that prevents. <laughs> so it's either the. <laughs> so it, <clears throat> the an I think the answer is C. So it binds to the ribosomal subunit? It binds to the 23S subunit. MRRNA protein of the 50S subunit. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, like, I guess, like the way Conrad puts it, is it's, um, it's the ribosomal um, inhibitor. So, um, that's like what macrolides are. And specifically, uh, macrolides will bind to the 23S ribosomal subunit of the third. The 50S. 50S. Yeah. yeah. So that's the answer. Okay. All right. Next, anybody have a question for you? What uh, what um, would be a? What's the one that that prevents the uh, acetylation? Or It's not penicillin. That's E. The. Uh, or quinolone. Aminoglycosides? Is that what it was? Aminoglycosides is a ribosomal, but. It blocks a transferase enzyme. Uh, yeah, so it doesn't go from. The... Acetylation. Oh, so is that it? Okay. So it's aminoglycoside? That's, I mean, it says that it's. Bacterial transferase enzymes inactivates the drug by acetylation, phosphorylation, or adenylation. Okay, yeah, so that's it. I think that's, yeah. Sort of. Yep. Cool. Next Good question. question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, a 35-year-old woman comes to the emergency department because of right flank pain that started one day ago. She also describes having nausea and pain with urination. Her medical history includes diabetes mellitus, hyperlipidemia, and hypertension. Vital signs reveal a temperature of 101.7, pulse of 24, um, respiratory rate of 16, and a blood pressure of 130 over 90. On examination, the patient appears lethargic and has costal vertebral tenderness along her right flank. Lab results um, were obtained. Sorry, I think I have a friend <laughs> in my house, so I have my... Okay, um, lab results were obtained were significant for white blood cell casts in the urine. Uh, which of the following would be the predominant innate defense cell type in the affected organ? A, basal cells, B, eosinophils, C, macrophages, D, mast cells, E, plasma cells, and F, polymorph nuclear leukocytes. <clears throat> I'm 
it's not mast cells or plasma cells. F. I think I want to go with F too. Did you? Yeah, I think so. Too. Yeah, so what does a patient have? UTI. Poly Pyelonephritis. Pyelonephritis, yeah. Because yeah, he has cancer. So, yeah, F, um, F is right. Polymorphin. PML. Yeah, because the white blood cells cast. Yeah, white blood cells cast. <laughs> okay. Any questions? Okay. Uh, Eleven month old boy is brought to the physician for a follow up exam after having pneumococcal pneumonia last week. He was healthy until six months of age when he developed his first episode of otitis media. Since that time, he has been hospitalized two times for pneumonia, treated for numerous ear infections, and has required drainage of skin abscesses on his buttocks on three occasions. Which of the following is the most likely underlying defect responsible for this patient's condition? Decreased T-cell maturation and proliferation due to abs absence of cytokine receptor. Defect in, microtub my, defect in microtubules. <laughs> defect in the synthesis of reactive oxygen species. Embryonic malformation of the third and fourth pharyngeal pouches. Or mutation in tyrosine kinase. <clears throat> e. So I have an answer choice for A and E. Not D. C. Okay, so you have the. The B, Bruton, egg. Yeah. And A. A would be. Um, Is this hyper? IgG? Here, right here. Yeah. Alright, just give me the guess and I'll go over each of them. Well, because. I'm going to say E. Okay, so E. Tulsi, are you sticking with A? I'm between A or B. Divya? I'll take B. Okay. Shri Akigashi? Alright, so the answer is E. No, six months of age was the tip off for me. Yeah. Um, so he has Bruton's um, and B cell maturation deficiency that leads to the absence of antibodies. So he's healthy until six months because of the maternal antibodies. But once they vein off, he's susceptible to bacterial infections from encapsulated organisms um, such as uh, pneumococcus, haemophilus, or pseudomonas. So <clears throat> it's a mutation of the BTK which is a tyrosine kinase that's responsible for the maturation of pro-B cells into mature B cells. So going back, A is uh, SCID, uh, which is a cytokine receptor. So it's a subtype of SCID, which is defect in the IL-2 receptor. And do you guys know what the second most common cause of SCID is? ADA? Uh, adenosine deaminase. Uh, like x Chidiac Higashi syndrome. So, defect in the microtubule function leads to inability of phagocytosis of the pathogen. And these patients often have peripheral neuropathy. Don't those have some albinism? That too, yes. Peripheral neuropathy and albinism. C is a chronic granulomatosis disease. So, NADPH oxidase helps create the reactive oxygen. <laughs> um, and D is obviously D Georgians. And these patients will have absent of T cells. So any questions about this question? All right, so we have a next one. A 46-year-old obese uh, woman comes to the physician for a routine exam. She has prominent facial acne and an ultrasound shows presence of multiple peripheral cysts on both ovaries. Menses occurs at uh, regular intervals. Her temperature is 99.5 Fahrenheit. Pulse is 80, respirations are 19, and blood pressure is 168 over 104. Treatment is started, and she develops amenorrhea. Which of the following drugs was used in her treatment? Amenorrhea. Spironolactone? 
Okay, so and now you, I either use Sprona Wax on her Clomiphene. I was going with A. Uh, that was like the thing that popped into my head, but... Yeah, because Clomiphene is what you normally use to treat um, yes, PCOS. <laughs> but you can use Sprona Wax because yeah. it has the anti-androgen properties. I think it is A, right? So I have an answer for D, an answer for A. Divya? I said D at the same time Pete did, so you probably didn't hear okay. me. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I did not. Okay, so the answer is D. Because the thing you want to make sure about, yes, you're right that she has PCOS, but she also has this. The blood pressure is super high, so uh, you're also treating both conditions of PCOS and hypertension. So... If you're treating both, spironolactone is both an antihypertensive and an antiandrogen. Um, so, but the side effect obviously is amenorrhea, um, and it works with this uh, collecting tubule and causes hyperkalemia as a side effect. Um, any questions? Mm -hmm. Cool. So. My question. 17 year old boy sustains a blow to the right knee while playing hockey and is brought to the emergency department with severe knee pain. He was skating at high speeds when he collided with another player traveling in the opposite direction. The players together hit the sideboards of the skating rink. Pete L. Sorry, I screwed that up. <laughs> Um, the patient was unable to bear weight and required assistance to return to the locker room. Past medical history is notable for a dental fracture, numerous sports-related contusions, and recurrent hypothermia related to ice fishing. His development has otherwise been normal. Physical exam reveals gross posterior displacement of the tibia relative to the femur. Which of the following structures is most likely to be injured in this patient? Think of uh, popliteal artery. Okay. You have posterior displacement of the tibia, so you're going to have <coughs> popliteal artery behind there. So you can, uh, I think the artery is the one that is more internal, so that's the one that would be closest in proximity to the bone, whereas the popliteal thing is more yeah, superficial. Yeah. I think it's artery as well. We'll see. <laughs> I wrong. Okay. Well, popliteal artery is correct. <laughs> so, posterior and anterior dislocations, popliteal artery is at high risk if it is located deep within the fossa, closer to the articular surfaces of the joint. So, this is most susceptible. Um, and as far as the other ones, common peroneal nerve is more commonly injured in the distal leg with blunt trauma to the lateral knee. Uh, the vein is less commonly injured than the artery. Um, saphenous vein provides sensory input to the medial leg and foot, so not in this location and the tibial nerve is also more superficial and more vulnerable to penetrating trauma rather than this sort of displacement. Ooh, anatomy. <laughs> Any questions? Oh, and then there's a little visual of where the popliteal artery is there for you. I highlighted it in the box. Next question. Next question. A four-year-old girl is brought to the physician by her father for evaluation of a painful rash affecting the right lower extremity. He says that his daughter has had no significant medical problems other than some colds and a couple of generalized rashes when she was younger. Physical exam shows the findings seen below. Which of the following is the most likely diagnosis in this patient? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, because none of the other ones would cause pain or rash, I don't think. Why then? I said I don't think the other ones would cause a painful rash, would I? Well, I guess... Oh, no, 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 never mind. You're right, because it's not a... Uh... <clears throat> Wait, atopic dermatitis, would that be poison ivy? Is that... Yeah, I think so. Well, poison ivy it's can be painful. Itchy, okay, I guess. Okay. And it's on the... Um, so it looks scaly, and it's also on, like, like extensor surfaces. Kind of, not really. So. Yeah, but... Uh, Usually it's well, like a bow, so I don't know. This is like a knee, but not really a knee. I'm just familiar with this image and this question, and I know that it's supposed to represent a dermatome. Oh. And it's unilateral. There's no vesicles on the other leg. Uh, so... <clears throat> yeah, shingles. Shingles is correct. So this <clears throat> shingle is most commonly seen in adults over the age of 50, but can occur in children, especially those who have had chicken pox within the first year of life. Um, let's see here. Um, you are right that it's unilateral and confined to one dermatome is kind of what they're trying to show in this image um, with grouped vesicles with underlying erythema um, accompanied by severe pain um, which Diasha also write about not really seen with the other guys here um, yeah do you guys have questions about the other options or y'all good <clears throat> Did you get this from first date or from U World? U World. Yeah. See, I, I remember when I I got this question wrong, <laughs> and I when I did it, cause I put a topic dermatitis because a four year old, and I was like, "What? There's no way she has shingles." Me too. Yeah, I put atopic what dermatitis. What a bitch. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, little little kids can also get this if they've had it really, really early. So would you say atopic dermatitis you would see more bilateral? Um, I th- yeah, I think you would see at least like have you ever gotten poison ivy? No, but I've seen people well, who've had it like it's oily, well, and then so, once you touch other stuff, it kind of expands. So like honestly, poison ivy looks like that, except. It's normally not confined to one area unless you like just swiped with a leaf and then let the oil sit and then took a shower and cleaned all the oil off. Then you would just get it in that little area that you swiped it at. But normally what happens is you get someone, you you keep hiking, and then you take your shirt off, which wipes it a bit. And then you eat some food that wipes it a bit. And then you put clothes back on, it wipes it a bit. So you have it like all over your arm. And then it, you get little marks on the other arm and a little bit on the, the dorsum of your hand or on your leg. So it will be at, more diffuse, whereas this is clearly showing the other leg for a reason. Gotcha. That makes sense. <clears throat> yeah. And also, uh, if you have, I, I think it is you, World. They do have a poison ivy question, and it shows, like, uh, streaks. Like, as though oh, someone walked past a, and a plant, like, brushed their leg. And it's in like streaks of vesicles. So, so I actually have uh, atopic dermatitis and poison ivy being different. Poison ivy being contact dermatitis. And oh, that's right, contact dermatitis. Yeah, yeah. This one mm. being an inheritable condition, so if parents can get it, kids will get it too. Um, usually, when kids are infants, and it'll eventually kind of dissipate by the time they're adults. Um, and they'll get flare up. Um, you typically see some sort of food allergies that can cause a flare up, and usually eruptions will occur on their cheeks or their buttocks or on flexure surfaces so behind the knee rather than in front of it. So, slightly different. Okay. 
Question? Yep. 25 year old man comes to ED due to cramps, nausea, and six to seven episodes of vomiting in the past three hours. He has no diarrhea or fever. Yesterday, the man, patient went on a long hike through the woods with some friends, and they stopped to get food at a Mandarin restaurant before heading home. This morning, he reheated some of his leftover chicken and rice for lunch. None of his friends have similar symptoms. Temp is 98, BP 121 over 78, heart rate is 88. What is the most likely cause of this patient's current condition? Is it a bacterial infection of the intestinal mucosa, ingestion of preformed enterotoxin in the food, intestinal bacterial colonization and toxin production, protozoal attachment and alteration of microvilli, or E virus induced small intestine inflammation? B. Hmm? B. Anybody else? I think it's B2. It is B. Uh, when you have something, well, this is what? Bacillus. There you go, Bacillus series. So uh, when you have these quick ones like Scombroid, Bacillus, uh, what's the other one? Um, um, um. Staph. Oh, oh, what? Staph. Okay, what? Never mind. Anyways, when you have these uh, quick, quick food poisoning reactions, that normally preformed enterotoxins, because if it was bacteria, just bacteria, then you'd need time for colonization to occur to cause the pathology. But if you have the toxin already in there, then it just goes right to town right away. So that's why. This guy ate it, you know, probably three, four hours ago, and now he's going crazy. I think she said Steph. Steph oh, or Yeah, Steph is another one. Cool. Any questions? All right, next one. A newly postpartum mother presents to her PCP complaining of breast pain. She states that the, bre the pain began yesterday morning and now is associated with redness. On examination, the patient's left breast has an erythematous ring surrounding the areola and is tender to the touch. There is no associated lymphadenopathy, and the patient does not have a fever. The physician recommends that the patient continue breastfeeding the child as not to avoid the affected breast. The patient is reluctant to feed her child with the affected breast, but the physician explains the reasoning behind the treatment. The immunoglobulin responsible for protecting the child in the desired treatment possesses what structural shape? Is it an isomer, a monomer, a dimer, a pentamer, or a D? C. <coughs> yes. And the answer is... Mm. What is the immunoglobulin? IgA. IgA. There you go. There you go. Cool. Any questions? No? Yeah. Those are my questions. I don't have a question. 